My dear Lord Sidney, I do not know when or by what means you will receive this dispatch. The loss of the supply ship Guardian has been a mortal blow and our situation is now most desperate. Disease is rampant and our lack of medicines and food is a constant concern. Despite this, we have continued our journeys to explore and map the territory. And I'm pleased to report we have found fertile land at last. It is at the head of a river, the native name for which is Paramatta. I hope to establish a new settlement there. But we have as yet been unable to discover what lies beyond the mountains to the west. I have found it necessary, essential, to increase discipline. But no matter how extreme the punishment, the thieving of stores and food continues. Sir, I beg you to send ample provisions. The third winter is now upon us, and I fear there will be much hardship for us all. Your obedient servant, Carry on. Ah! Ah! Papa? Yes, Patrick? Are we going to stay in this place? I don't know, Patrick. For the moment, we have no choice. What do you make of him? Marion, sir? I think if there was a ship home, he'd gladly take it. Yes, he certainly makes no secret of his disappointment at what we've accomplished this past two years. What did he expect? Towns like in the American colonies. A thousand convicts arriving on the second fleet any months now. That should convince Mr. Mannion how little the authorities at home have helped us. What's this? A proclamation reducing the rations, sir. Have it read and posted. Poor thing. Shouldn't have got caught. Get a gander at his lordship. What's her offence, Mr. Johnson? Prostitution, sir. Are those ladies convicts, sir? They're convicts, old chap. Not exactly ladies. Why is that one getting a haircut? Never mind, Patrick. Let's take a look at the house, Mr. Johnson. Bloody boglander. Nice clothes. You won't get them off him. I'll be worth a try. I go for Dad Johnson and he's got Esther. Could have one of them officers. <laughs> they wouldn't take Johnny. This is one of the few we've been able to build lately. What's happened here, Mr. Johnston? Why is everything so slack? We started from tents, Mr. Mannion, from nothing. Would you care to see inside? Hmm.
that? None of your business. Are you a convict? Don't talk daft, you ninny. I'm not a ninny. Yes, you are, in them stupid clothes. You look like a girl. At the back is a servant shed. Mm -hmm. And there's a decent view down to the harbour. Yes. Might do. Do you believe this colony has a future, Mr. Johnston? I doubted it once. Now it's one of the few things on which I agree with the governor. It seems an infertile spot. Ah, you should see the river flats at the place the natives call Parramatta. Oh, I intend to. And along the Hawkesbury and the Nepean, there's good land. You talk like a farmer, sir. I. Noted your remarks about the convict women, Mr. Johnston. And yet I hear that you cohabit with one. Many of us do. You'll need someone yourself. I may need a servant, Mr. Johnston, nothing else. If I stay. Had enough? No! Ah! Oh. Haven't even hit you yet. Something bit me. A snake. Don't be. Oh. Ouch! They're not snakes. Soldier ants. Quick! Bloody rotten things sting like hell. Shouldn't say hell. Hell's a place you go to if you're bad. Who says? My father. Ah! Hurts for a while. Where's your father? I ain't got one. Everybody has a father. Well, I ain't. You got a mother? Of course. My mother's in heaven. Where's yours? Down there. Doesn't sting so much now. Soldier ants. Yeah. Are there many? Plenty. Got to watch out. Some kids cry. I didn't. No. What's your name? Patrick Francis Mannion. What's yours? Johnny. Patrick. Papa, I've got to go. Patrick. Come on. Neptune. I think I would have celebrated her arrival once. Now it simply means more mouths to feed. Lieutenant John MacArthur, Your Excellency. Mr. MacArthur, I'm sorry to hear of Your Excellency's indisposition. Please be seated. Thank you. I bring greetings from the Secretary to the Navy, your friend George Rose. I've just informed him by dispatch that our new settlement at Rose Hill has been named after him. And messages of concern as to your well-being from Sir Joseph Banks and Lord Sidney. I'm obliged to you. And how is the voyage, Lieutenant? Unspeakable, sir. 400 convicts, a quarter of whom died. I need hardly describe the stench. I find the air distinctly more agreeable ashore. Now, my dear. <coughs> Your Excellency, and may I present my wife, Elizabeth. Ma'am. Your Excellency. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I gather, ma'am, your journey left something to be desired. Those poor people, Governor. It's a wonder any of them survived. I can vouch for that, sir. I've been aboard. The conditions were inhuman. Private profiteers, I'm afraid, Mr. Balmain. Scoundrels, sir. Slave traders. The more convicts they export, the more they stand to gain. By starving and overcrowding, Half the survivors are sick with scurvy and fever. I think, sir, my wife is well acquainted with their plight, without being further reminded. Excuse me, ma'am. If you'll excuse me, I must see to more hospital tents. Surgeons. We need them. They're invariably gloomy fellows. Balmain is a good man. I don't doubt it, Your Excellency. My wife was wondering as to the feminine companionship she might find here. There are a number of ladies, ma'am. I'll arrange for you to meet Mrs. Johnson. 
Your wife, Lieutenant? No, ma'am. My namesake. Our minister. You're not married? No. It's going to change here. Mannion. Now this MacArthur. His wife seems decent enough. The officers and their ladies will be different. You want me to go? Is that it? I'll see them in hell first. Come on, you lot, line up. Come on, come on. I've uh, got a few for you to choose from, sir. If you don't like them, I can get you another bunch. It's the best you can do. Well, I can round you up some more, sir. No, oh, never mind. That one. It's you. Well, come here when you're spoken to. I require a housekeeper. I'm prepared to give you a trial. Well? What do you say? Yes, sir. I want that dirt washed off you. And go and see the Reverend Johnson's wife about some suitable clothing. Have you got a name? Prentice. Ellen Prentice. All right. Better smarten your manners up, my lady. You won't last long with him. Convict child. I'm not allowed to talk to you. Don't then. Johnny. Patrick. How many more times must I tell you? You are not to associate but with. Yes, Papa. Now remember. Choo! 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 Be polite and obedient. You hear me? I hear. You've got a kid, you'll be back here with us. Johnny. I want you to stay up behind the house till it's dark. Because I say so. Wait there. Till he's gone inside. That's better. Thank you, sir. Your quarters are at the back. You can begin your duties immediately. No 
nobody, sir. We'll go ashore. Oh, Chris. And this is the place. There must have been a great many of them. They didn't leave much. Well, Lieutenant Dawes claims he saw several hundred. Basket. Stay by the boat. Stand down. Hello, Venalong. Good friend, long time say. You have a fine beard. You shave. No razor. You come to Sydney. Cut hair shave. What did he say? He says white man bad. Wait. Give me the bag. Sir, I We've don't... We've got to make them trust us. For you. Me. Ah, to bear. Get it, I'll get it. I don't like this. I have to admire his courage. I have others for your friends, but first. Kapu the Kapu. Kapu. Nah, Kapu. Don't worry, Mulega. Wait, you buka. You. Mulega, na, the boy, chinama. The king. The king. Yeah, call it away. Where is the dark man? Boy, chinula. Yeah, where is the dark man? Tell your friend. Yeah, where is the dark man? Yeah, come on, let's go. Where is the dark man? 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 His wounds are healing slowly, ma'am. And my dear wife called on him this morning. I found him in low spirits, I must confess, Mrs. MacArthur. A regrettable affair? Most. But I do feel the governor would do better to attend the duties of his office rather than trying to parley with savages. My own thoughts, sir. I'm shocked at the lack of progress here. Inadequate, sir. The man is inadequate. A dreamer. Order and discipline. That's what we need to attract free settlers. You may go. I'll call you when I need you. Is she proving satisfactory, Mr. Mannion? No, I have no complaints so far, ma'am. You're fortunate, sir. Good servants seem a rare commodity. Extremely so. They are seldom clean and almost never to be trusted. Do you intend to remain in the colony, Mr. Mannion? Only if conditions improve, ma'am. Leadership. That's what we lack. This place has a future. Right people in power. Uh -huh. And tell me, Manuel, how do you think improvements can be made? Oh, I'm a farmer, sir. 
I don't like to get mixed up with any sort of legal exchanges. Understandable. You can't always turn your back on these things. They have a habit of popping up. More potions, Mr. Balmain. Potions I can prescribe. But for what ails you, I have no medicine for that. You need mine, Mr. Balmain. I know despair when I see it. One spear, one moment of anger. I don't want to send out punitive expeditions. We have to build homes and stores, not defenses. We have to farm, not fight. Am I wrong to believe that we can only live in this land if we live in peace and harmony with its people? Is that so misguided, Mr. Balmain? Not misguided, sir. It's just difficult. An excellent dinner. Most obliged to you, Manion. Good night. Good night, ma'am. I'd had a child, you'd not have taken me. I've done my best. I've looked after Master Patrick. I've cooked for you and cleaned. I won't tolerate deceit. I was going to tell you. I doubt that. I don't want to see him. You understand? Yes, sir. Keep him out of the house and away from my son. Oh, well, that means, uh, it means that God sent him a baby. From the sky? Yes. It's a long way. Wouldn't he break all his bones, Papa? Hey, uh, you just copy out what you've been told, Patrick, and talk about it to the Reverend Johnson at the next Bible class, hmm? Johnny? 
You go back to your lessons, Master Patrick. It's all right. The plough's gone to visit the MacArthur's. Never mind. You go inside. But why can't I play with Johnny? Because you'll get us all in trouble. Especially me. Anyhow, I don't know where he is. He goes to the native camp. He told me. That's as maybe. They give him food. He can talk their language. He's not afraid of anything. He's cleverer than me. You do your book reading. You'll be cleverer soon enough. Hunting. Hey. Hunting fish, hunting kangaroo, hunting new wife. <laughs> Here, have some. You make this for me. It's good. You my friend? You my friend, eh? and stab you. Of course I won't tell. What is it? Johnny, did you steal them? Well, only some. I sold fish and oysters and things. I'm saving up. What for? Swear you won't laugh. I swear. When I get grown up, I'm going to be gentry, like you. How? With me money, of course. I'm going to buy a house and fine clothes and have servants. You can't. You can't be gentry. You've got to be born it. No, you don't. All you need's money. That's all your pa's got, dirty old boglander. My father owns you and your mother, and you can never be gentry, so there. Patrick? You won't tell? Never. Johnny? Go on, quick. I wish you could be gentry. Truly I do. With concern, my lord, that I find myself obliged to request His Majesty's permission to return to England. I've not been well these past two years, and now, although recovered from the spear wound, I find my duties most taxing. Yes? Forgive the late hour, Your Excellency. Fenelong has come to pay his respects and to have a shave. Mind my... Mind my... to the windows in your room. Well, uh, is that the orb, sir? That's all. Except button your dress. I don't care for immodesty. Yes.
Alan. Yes, sir. Come here. Your house been along. No, no, you, your house. For you, your wife, your friends, to come and go as you please. My mark, good. You look. It won't be popular, sir. He came back of his own volition, Lieutenant. His people are starting to meet and talk with ours. Don't you think that's progress? Perhaps. But there are still incidents. We can never trust them. <laughs> now, they us. But isn't this a beginning? I'm simply voicing what the officers will say. And our new gentry and their ladies. I know. They're going to miss him when he goes home. Some will. You have more in common with him than you think, Johnston. You both believe this place has a future. Yes, but unlike the governor, I'm prepared to stay and see it. and going, playing their infernal music. What will the man do next? MacArthur believes this sort of thing will stop once Major Gross and the New South Wales Corps arrive to take command. Indeed it will, my dear. Well, pleasant journey, Mannion. Thank you. Ma'am. That woman, is she his... I understand so, my love. It would appear to be common knowledge. I'll be gone for about a week. You're in charge here until I get back. Where's Patrick? I sent him to his Bible class. Captain Tench is expecting me. He'll wait. Back, my dear, to the back, my dear. Come on, 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 come on,
Nak pemel gamer ni zaman nak kurang kuih. Rak kalmel gawang mengura. Parramatta settlements to the north of here. We go west. How far? About 12 miles beyond a place called Tomb Gabby. Helen, why doesn't Johnny like me anymore? Oh, it seems he doesn't care for any of us nowadays. He won't even talk to me. Perhaps it's better. Ellen, why do you eat at the table with us now? You ask too many questions, Master Patrick. Your papa wants it that way. Worth the journey, Mr. Mannion. Worth every step, Mr. Tench. This is the place. In the pen, Mr. Mannion. Yes, I've marked the land, Your Excellency. And given the details to Captain Collins, I simply wish for your approval. Well, it's good country. I said as much two years ago in letters to Lord Sydney. Then I can count on your support. It's isolated. You can see the disadvantages. The mountains so close, none of us knowing what lies beyond. I'm not concerned with the mountains, sir. Nor am I exactly penniless. I have the money and resources to build extensively and to farm. You'll take your son and your housekeeper? Oh, yes. Together with an overseer that I've chosen and whatever convicts your excellency is prepared to assign. Very well. I'll make out the necessary documents. I'm obliged. Permit me a word of warning, Mannion. This is a harsh country given to extremes. Treat the land well and you will prosper. Exploit it, and you may find in the end it exploits you. I'm honored, sir, by your solicitude. Good night. Exploit me, indeed. How far is it? Far enough from fools and petty authority. Will we have a house? Yes, finer than this. And Johnny? Oh, he's out of control. He's a pest. He comes with us or else. I don't take kindly to threats, Ellen. You work. And if he gives trouble out there, there are ways to deal with that. Set me down. Ship with white wings, remember? We used to come here, you and I, and watch for ships that never came. <laughs> when they did come, what little joy they brought us. And this time, old friend, it's my ship. My ship? At last. I wanted to do so much. 
I fear for what's to come for your people. And mine. Bungwai, you going to England? To England, yes. You see His Majesty. King I, guess, I dare say. Take me, Bungwa. But Benelong, it's far away, your new wife. Sick of wife, go to England, see the great king. The king. The king? If you mean it. You mean my Bungwa, I mean my wife, I mean my... Party by the sound of it. Major Gross and his officers of the New South Wales. Force. Real women at last. <laughs> well, something's amused them. They find it quite hilarious the thought of Benelong being taken to London. Ah. Well, new people, new attitudes. We're bound to see a change. Yes, I'm afraid we will. Good night, Tench. Good night. Okay with that? Any chips or scratches and all of your eyes? I expect the furniture in Paramount at the end of the week, Sergeant. My boat ready. It's waiting at the observatory landing, sir. What's that? It's the governor going aboard his ship, sir. Can't say whether they're glad or sorry to see him go. Patrick. Come on, come on, put your backs into it, you lazy bastards. Well, well, well. You've done all right for yourself. Have you, you seen Johnny? No. I intend to leave, with or without him. A few minutes longer, sir. Please. I know where he is. He must be off the river by nightfall. In the boat. Patrick. Here he is, now. I had to tell about the box. Patrick, in the boat. They'd have left you behind. I'll take the box. It's mine! We'll discuss that when I find out how you came by it. to others now. It grows cold to bed along. Time to go below.
you served as secretary to Captain Philip in addition to your duties as judge advocate? Uh, yes, sir. Well, as Lieutenant Governor, I shall be making my own arrangements in due course. Meanwhile, uh, I'm dissatisfied with the rations for my men. They're to be increased. But how, sir? We're still perilously short of supplies. On that same order, Collins, you'll find that convict rations are to be reduced. Major, it was Governor Phillips' policy that rations should be equal. Phillips' edicts are no longer our concern. Until a new governor is appointed, I am in command. I don't argue. Just promulgate it. Lucky to make Parramatta by dark. You men secure the boat, then bring our belongings. I'm sorry I told John. Is Johnny drowned, Papa? That's enough, Patrick. Go to bed. We've done all we can. I know. Tomorrow I'll report it to the commanding officer in Parramatta. But he isn't dead. Oh, well, then. He could swim. He can swim like the natives. He's out there. Somewhere. If you wish to remain with me, you're better off without him. You leave at dawn. And 